Hello, my name is Leslie Berger, and I would like to welcome you to this episode of Renew. Renew is a show about the College of Forest Resources at Mississippi State University. The College of Forest Resources works to promote and enable the conservation, management, and wise use of our diverse natural resources. The College of Forest Resources has three departments, and today we're going to learn a little bit more about the Department of Forestry. Representing that department is a brand new employee, Dr. Esteban Galeano. So thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me here. So we were chatting before the show started. You started here at Mississippi State in August? August 2022. Okay. That's right. So we hired you to be an assistant professor of forestry. And I, so I did a little looking up on you to find out some information about you because this is the first time we've, we've met. And I saw that you are a forest geneticist. Correct. So for those who might not know what that is, can you explain what a geneticist is, what they do, and how you take that science and apply it to forestry? So basically we have a lot of uh, branches in genetics, and in particular in forest genetics, uh, we usually talk about diversity, mm -hmm. how these plants, understory plants or big trees, um, they are being organized in a population mm -hmm. in a forest, but also we can do some molecular um, analysis, which is in the lab, you don't need to go to the field. Mm -hmm. So I have been very lucky to work in those areas. Mm -hmm. So uh, genetics applied in the field with big trees in the forest and also look into genes and molecular dynamics in the lab. So basically we want to improve our material. So we usually look first for growth. Mm -hmm. We need to select the best trees mm -hmm. to be deployed in our areas, in our plantations. But also currently we have this challenge of the climate change. Sure. So we definitely need to select the best trees mm -hmm. to cope with drought Correct. and pathogens and who knows what is coming right. afterwards. So. So that, yes, I can see that would be a challenge. Um, most uh, young people, perhaps, if they're thinking about science, would not even consider the kind of science that you did. So how is it that you ended up in this position? What is your path from, say, a, a student, 16, 17 years old, to where you are right now here at Mississippi State? How did you get, how did you get here? And especially with genetics. And right, right. Who wants to be right. a geneticist when they're 17? Mm, no one wants to. <laughs> no one does. So, you know, like, it's, it's very passionate, mm -hmm. uh, genetics, because you can understand so many things. Mm -hmm. And no matter if you are working with animals, mm -hmm. if you are working with humans, right. or health science, if you are working with plants and forests, genetics are the same. Mm -hmm for any species. So if you work with genetics in plants, you end up understanding the genetics of animals mm -hmm. and humans. So when I was really young, um, I was so um, in love with genetics in general, but also with plants. Mm -hmm. So when I enrolled into my forestry program back in Colombia, um, I wanted to study genetics at the same time with with forestry. So I began that path together. Mm -hmm. And then once I finished my bachelor in forestry, I began looking for do my graduate studies in genetics. Mm -hmm. So I ended up um, studying in, in Brazil. And part of my PhD I did it in, in Ohio. So I learned a lot of sophisticated techniques, mm -hmm. uh, like working with computers, analyzing genes, and then going to the field, going to the lab. Genetics is always like that. You know, you need to go to the field, go to the lab, go to the computer. It's all the time these three components. And um, surprisingly, I had the chance to work as a research associate in Canada. Nice. So I fell in love with the boreal forest. And in Canada, it's very important, the conservation. Mm -hmm. It's the most important thing for the government and you may know the land in Canada, it's public. Mm -hmm. So the government rents the land to the companies for 50 years, 60 years, 100 years. 
and the government needs to ensure that the boreal forest is conserved. So the forest companies need to make sure that they are maintaining the forest in a good shape. Right. So that's what I have been like in different paths, falling in love with genetics and genetics, and then I am in here. Wow, that's very interesting. We're going to take a little break here for just a moment. We're going to come back after this break and talk more about this. Okay. I hope you will stay with us. We'll see you shortly. Want a career as big as the outdoors? Want to have an impact on the environment? The College of Forest Resources at Mississippi State University delivers hands-on training, ensuring clean air and water, wildlife habitats, and a sustainable environment. Creating new wood products and retooling old ones for today and tomorrow. Find a career in whatever path you choose. Majors in forestry, natural resource and environmental conservation, sustainable bioproducts, wildlife, fisheries, and aquaculture. Want a career as big as the outdoors? Choose the College of Forest Resources at Mississippi State University. Discovery. It tells our history and determines our future. At Mississippi State University, we're digging deep, unlocking an understanding of our past, validating it. Middle East exploration by faculty and students is uncovering evidence that unravels ancient mysteries. Scholars have long thought of the biblical kings David and Solomon as mythological figures. Our research offers evidence that supports their existence, boosting MSU into an international league of experts on archaeology. Now we're changing the way people think about the past, opening up new possibilities of understanding for future generations. Digging deeper, learning more. Welcome back to Renew. We've been learning about the Department of Forestry with our visit with Dr. Esteban Galliano. And before the break, you were telling me about how you had done some work in Canada in the boreal forest there. And they actually have kind of a different approach in that the land is owned by the government and they rent that land out right. to, the, to the people who might be using that, the companies to, to, that are using that land to produce the products that they need in Canada or ship elsewhere. So it's a little different than what we have here in the U.S. We do right. have public lands like yeah. those owned by the Bureau of Land Management, U.S. Forest Service. There are agreements with different people to use those lands for different purposes. But most of our land, particularly here in Mississippi, is not publicly owned, it's privately owned. So how do you take the kinds of things that you were learning in, in Brazil and in Canada and Ohio and apply that to the system we have here in Mississippi in the southeast where um, the, the land belongs to the, the landowner? Kind of a different model. So basically uh, in forestry we have something called um, breeding programs or forestry improvement programs. Mm -hmm. Basically they work similarly in terms of growing trees that are coming from wild stands. We select the best genotypes or clones or trees, and then we produce the seeds uh, from those elite parents in the greenhouse, and that's it. But it changes depending on where we are. Mm -hmm. So in Brazil, it is a, clonal pro a lot of clonal propagation, for example, eucalyptus, teak. In Canada, as I was saying, it is a lot of conservation. So you need to, like the companies need to do a lot of reports and report to the government a lot of uh, like uh, parameters, like how is the diversity going, how many seeds they are collecting, okay. how many plants they are deploying. Mm -hmm. In the US, it's more flexible. Mm -hmm. We can do much more things mm -hmm. without making sure that the um, diversity it is in a certain point, mm -hmm. but we still need to sure. worry about the diversity. Right, because you were talking earlier about how we can we need to select for trees that are capable of 
meeting all these different um, capabilities, whether it's to be able to resistant to drought or, or disease, but we also want some species that can grow fast, grow strong, because we use those for different um, uses. And if we don't have the diversity, we don't have the gene pool to select from to do the breeding programs. Correct, and the other thing is the seed. Seeds are the main component of the production mm -hmm. and the sustainability and to, to, to have revenues later on. So seeds, it's everything in a breeding program in the, in the forestry component. So usually when we begin improving, mm -hmm. we have less improved seeds and more unimproved seeds. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with me? Like mm -hmm. it is very easy to go into the forest, wild forest, and take any seed that I want. Correct. But is that seed gonna grow fast, have drought resistance? So the more we improve the seeds, the less improves it we have, so it is a trade-off between the costs Correct. and the availability, and improves it are really expensive. Right, because you have all this technology that's behind it, the science that you're doing, I mean, your time costs stuff, your lab costs time, all the experimentation is time and money, so it does make sense that that would yeah, be that's right. something to be um, considered. So let's take, you out of the, let's take you out of the forest and drop you in the classroom. Um, the kinds of things you're talking about, those kind of considerations, those are critical thinking skills to be able to make decisions and calculate trade-offs. So how do you take that experience in the field and apply it to a classroom of students? So first of all, we need to do labs, for sure. Forest genetics a course um, has a huge lab component, mm -hmm. and not only about molecular genetics or being doing things with pipettes or DNA, right. no. <laughs> We need to work a lot in the greenhouse. I love greenhouse work and I love to grow uh, seedlings from seeds because you can see the difference between growth mm -hmm. in improved and unimproved seeds. Mm -hmm. So that's a huge component of my course, to take the students into the greenhouse and show them how is the difference in the performance of the seeds. The other thing is to do nice calculations. So we have a lot of calculations related with with genetics, so they need to put their hands on the paper mm -hmm. and do a lot of calculations. Right, yes, and I can see, it uh, may not be the most favorite thing that they like doing, but when you see that it has value, when you can tie that exercise of the calculations or the computer work to how we can conserve diversity of fields or produce products that people can use, then it begins to be more meaningful to the students. Well, I think I need to follow you out to your greenhouse one day because I think I'd be really interested in seeing the work that you're doing. Yeah. I really enjoyed our visit, and I appreciate you coming and sharing the work that you're doing um, in the Department of Forestry. It sounds like you're off to just a really amazing start. I hope the rest of you that joined us today have learned a little bit more about the Department of Forestry and some of the really interesting work that happens in forest genetics. I hope that you will join us again and renew, and until we meet again, I've been your host, Leslie Berger.